thank you everybody for coming. I appreciate it. Well, I brought some visual aids. Um, the first one is five pounds of fat, just in case you wondered what that looked like out of body. Here it is, five pounds of fat. I gave it to a class of three-year-olds and they were trying to lift it and you know do everything with it. It weighs more than them and that sort of thing. But this is really a reality check when you look at health and wellness. Five pounds of fat can harbor a lot of things. And I don't know, should I not pass it around? Should I pass it around? I don't know. Maybe not. Okay. <laughs> okay, never mind. Okay. I know, it's pretty disgusting. Um, my other visual aid is my client, Erin, from, she is from the Alzheimer's um, uh, division. She's my client, but I'm also going to incorporate her and let her talk a little bit about Alzheimer's because when we talk about health and wellness, it's mental, emotional, and physical wealth. And that is what I deal health, that is what I do as a clinic. March is National Nutrition Month. Um, Ideal Protein is the product that I am a franchise of and Dr. Tran started this protocol back over in France over 25 years ago. And this is our giveaway today, Steve, so I don't know if people want well, to... Um, yeah. This um, is, this what is we'll the... Do, what okay. we'll do for the giveaway, if you have a business card, rather than pass the pot around, uh -huh. I'll, I'll bring it around and you can drop your card. In. Okay. And this is the giveaway. This is his story about Ideal Protein and it's, it's amazing. We all have a story, every single one of us. So um, I did pass out a handout, and I'm not going to go over it page by page, but I do want to touch on some of the points that are really valid and important. First of all, our bodies are not designed to lose weight. Our bodies are designed to gain, gain weight. And that's something that you really need to think about as you get older. Um, people say, you know, I'm this you know, I'm this age, or I've always been this weight, or I'm a female versus male because males lose a lot faster than females. But when you look at weight and when you look at diet, um, weight loss incorporates 80% of what you are eating, and only 20% of it is your activity. So people say, well, I'm just going to go work out, you know, and then I'll lose the weight. It's only 20% of it. What you put in your body, the food that you put in your body is your fuel. And that's really, really important. Um, everything that you need to lose weight exists in you right now. Uh, how does Ideal Protein make losing weight easier? It combines a medically managed ketogenic protocol with one-on-one -on -one coaching, and that is what I do. Uh, if you would look in, step into my office, you will see I have the product that is incorporated with regular eating of vegetables and a healthy protein. And um, sugar is the biggest culprit of all. As you look in your um, handout here, I wanted to go to one of the pages that talks about sugar. And if you don't have one, I'd be happy to. <clears throat> sugar is eight times more addictive than cocaine. And what's interesting about this, and that is true, um, what's interesting about it, cocaine and heroin, heroin only activate one spot of your brain for pleasure. Sugar lights up your brain like a pinball machine. So sugar is so deadly and carbs turn into sugar. So it's important as we look at the ideal protein protocol that we get the sugar out of your body. We get the glycogen out of there and um, that you e are eating a, a well-balanced protein and um, that your body eats the fat instead of the sugar that you put into it all the time. So that's, that's really important. Um, as I talked about mental, emotional, and physical wellness, we need to be balanced. And when one area of our body gets off, we get off in all sections. For example, you get up and you're not feeling so good and you go to your closet and you look and you think I don't have anything to wear and you put something on and you don't feel good about what you're wearing because you feel fat then you go eat a big old breakfast because I can't fit into my clothes anyway it's a vicious cycle so it's important to get your wellness in balance and when you start with one area whether it's wellness in mental or emotional um, they all go in sync as my clients come in 
as you see their before pictures, they're not feeling too positive about themselves. You look at their after pictures and they're like, look at me, I've lost X amount of pounds. And the, the, their wellness, their mental, emotional, and physical wellness, they're balanced again, and that's really important. Um, we all have a why of why we do things, why we lose weight, why we purchase certain things. My why is that I'm a heart patient from birth. I was born with an atrial septal defect and at age 10 I had open heart surgery. So my why is I don't ever want to be in a situation where my heart is compromised. Unfortunately, life gets in the way. In 2007 I had a lot of stress going on in my life and I had atrial fib and I had to be shocked back into rhythm. I never, ever want to be in that situation again. Um, I started looking for ways to lose weight, uh, ran into my sister-in-law at a family event and she had lost weight through Ideal Protein in South Dakota and she said check it out. So I did and I went on the protocol and in six months I lost 65 pounds. So I don't want to look back ever and have a situation where my heart is compromised. Heart problems run in my family and um, you know it, it's I, I'm not going to take challenges with that. I just want to be the healthiest version that I can be. My other motivation for this are my kids and my four grandkids. I have four very active grandchildren. The, fir the oldest one is 16. And I want to be able to get out there and do things with them. And when you have extra weight on and you have extra inflammation and you have all of that stuff, you're not active. And I was so sluggish. Um, I would take myself from work where I was sitting behind a desk eight hours a day, sluggishly take myself home and sit on the couch. I just had no motivation at all. And that was not a good, that was not a good feeling for me. Um, so that was the other reason why I went on to the Ideal Protein Protocol. This page is some of my success stories. Erin would be one of my success stories as you see her right at the top and I'll let her talk a little bit about that as well. Um, but as you look through uh, this, you can see different factors of why certain things happen, why you choose uh, ideal protein over a keto diet. Um, I do talk to people and they say, well, yeah, I'm, I'm fine, I'm good, I'm doing the keto diet. There's a handout that gives you the pros and cons of keto versus ideal protein. And it's just, this is just, education is really important and it's really important to be educated about different things. Um, we are a three-phase protocol. The first phase is where you go into losing your weight, getting your ideal weight, and the second phase is called stabilization where we make sure that you're not going to balloon back up after getting off this protocol, and the third phase is called maintenance. Because a lot of times you will hear people, I have clients come in and I look at their health profile, and they've been on every single diet under the sun, and I'll say, what was it that you didn't like or why wasn't this successful for you? Well, I went back to my old habits. This is a lifestyle change and you can make changes without being on a protocol since, such as getting seven to nine hours of sleep a night, drinking lots of water, eating more fruits and, fruits and vegetables, eating more protein and cutting out sugar. And if you even do those things without even being on a protocol, you will see changes within your body. I promise you. Um, so that's the, this is the, the three phases. And what our clients do is they come in and they stand on a scale and it, the weight goes right to the, uh, my computer and into their phone. And you are able to track everything about your, your water, everything and you journal what you're eating. Because a lot of times you think, oh, I can just have a bite of this or I can taste that or I'll, I'll get back on tomorrow. Um, maybe Erin will discuss that a little bit more, but you've got to be cognizant of what you're putting in your body. Medications are horrible because a lot of the medications that your doctors give you have side effects. Like the side effect list is a lot longer than the medication that you're being fixed for anyway that's supposed to cure you. So, Food is your fuel. If you make good choices in food, um, it can heal your body. And we have three sources of energy in our bodies. Glucose or the sugar and muscle and fat. And once you get the glucose or the sugar out of your body, your body starts feeding on the fat and on the ideal protein protocol, because of all the scientific measures, this, it, this does not have you lose muscle mass, which is really important because you need the muscle mass to, um, 
to function, and it's, it's a very positive thing. Um, I talked about the sugars a little bit already, and I'm kind of just going through this quickly. We talk about things in our gut, gut killers, antibiotics are horrible, sugars are horrible, stress. If you have any amount of stress, that is, that is really, I mean, that can send you into a, a really negative situation. Um, gluten or tap water, these are all things that are gut killers. So keep that in mind. Alcohol uh, is prohibited while on the first phase of this protocol because of all the sugars it has in it. And so if you can get away from alcohol and sugar, um, and some people are like, no, I gotta go tailgate, I'm sorry, or I have to have this you know, wedding thing. You, it, you have to make the choice. You have to make the choice of what you're gonna put in your body. So that's really important. Um, we talk about long-term health and benefits, and your health is an investment, not an expense. When people come in to me and they say, you know, how much is this protocol? And I give them the amount, they're like, that's way too expensive, I can't afford it. Really? Tally up what you eat in a day, how much that costs. Going out to lunch, going out through fast food, um, things here and there. Tally up your meds. How much do you pay for meds? Tally up how many times you go to the doctor because you're unhealthy. It's like this is an investment that is very important and it's not, it's not expensive at all. Take care of your body. So this, this is, what is, is what it talks about being an investment. And I'm going to take um, a break here because when you are on, when you have a healthy body and it's operating in a healthy manner, you have the less chance of getting some cancers because our fat cells are sick and that's when disease creeps in. Alzheimer's, which is, this is where I'm going to let um, Aaron talk about this, diabetes, hypertension, high cholesterol, and coronary artery disease. Um, this is where I'm going to take a break and let her talk a little bit about brain health, if that's okay. Sure. Do you, yeah. do you want to? I can yell. Okay. Can I, I, yeah, I can just yell. Okay. Um, do you want me to talk a little bit about the longest day? Do you want me to talk about my experience with Ideal Health? Or? I start out a little bit as the client and then go ahead and move to. Sure. So my name's Erin Holscher. I'm with the Alzheimer's Association. But first and foremost, I was a client of Terry's. You can't hear me? I need to change the mic. Oh. Okay. okay. No problem. Now I can't yell. So, that would be, yeah. so um, I started off as a client of, of Terry's and, and I was just ready for a change. I had tried different things for a couple of weeks here, a couple of weeks there and, and hadn't really committed to it but needed, no, I needed to, to make a change. So um, had a friend that had done Ideal Protein, very similar um, to Terry coming on board. And um, just the, the resources, the tools, I knew what I was supposed to eat, I knew what I wasn't supposed to eat, but it's a slippery slope. Like Terry kind of mentioned of one day, one bad meal becomes a few more bad meals and then um, you just justify it over and over and over. So um, the thing that I really found success with with Terry was Terry. Um, I come in every week, I get measured, I get, I take, I get um, weights and, and body measurements, and then I get somebody to talk to of, hey, here were the choices I was gonna make, here's what I thought through. Um, I can text Terry and say, hey, I'm going out to eat, what are, the, well, you know, what are some ideas? And um, so there, there are foods that you eat, which does make it easy, um, but now I'm also learning healthier choices. I'm more aware of what I'm putting into my body. I'm, I'm become, like Terry mentioned, it's kind of that lifestyle. It's kind of making those conscious changes that every bite matters and everything, and you can recorrect and come back. Um, so that was kind of my experience with Ideal Protein um, and I've had a great experience with the protocol but then also with that personalized coaching has been phenomenal. Just shy of 70 pounds. So yep so it's been it's been hard um, but it's it's been lifestyle changes and it's not a quick fix and it's not something of just I know that when I choose to to go off and and eat normally again, I'm not going to eat normally again. I'm not, I was not, people say, hey, how do you, how did you lose weight? I stopped eating a pack of King's Hawaiian rolls every day, you know, but I did you know, because it's one becomes two. And so it's, it's, it's making those changes, those conscious um, changes. But now I am understanding, incorporating that into my lifestyle. I don't, I don't want to be on ideal protein food for the rest of my life. That's not the fix. Ideal health has taught me ideal health. Um, is kind of that tie into it. And so that being said, I also work for the Alzheimer's Association. So brain health, um, 
taking care of your body, like Terry's kind of mentioned, of sleep, stress, nutrition, exercise, all that goes into a healthy lifestyle, which in turn turns into a healthy aging process. So with Alzheimer's, we've got 5.8 million Americans that are currently battling Alzheimer's and other related dementias. Alzheimer's is just the um, most diagnosed disease, but it's a cognitive impairment. So all of that's gonna kind of tie into um, Lewy body, Parkinson's with dementia, all of those healthy, um, or excuse me, all of those health impacting diseases that we're here fighting at the Alzheimer's Association. So my role is I support an initiative called The Longest Day. Can I jump in a little bit about that? Um, the Longest Day is a signature event supported by the Alzheimer's Association, which is a do-it-yourself fundraiser. So if you guys have heard of the walks, you, those are kind of, you know, hey, you come out, you walk, you fundraise, great. Um, f fantastic day, excuse me. Um, and it's, it's a wonderful experience of bringing the community together um, and, and fighting that, that Alzheimer's disease and those dementias. Now, the, lo the Longest Day is a little bit more of a customizable way to fundraise based on individuals and businesses. So I partner with, sorry, I partner with individuals and businesses creating customized ways for them to fundraise for the 35,000 Nebraskans who are battling Alzheimer's and other dementias. So I'm working with Terry on a little bit of, you know, because it's gotta make sense for a business to be involved of, hey, it's, it's going towards a great cause. We are, um, the Alzheimer's Association has 50 support groups across the state. We've got 16 community educators that are telling the public about what's the difference between normal aging and what is Alzheimer's or what are those 10 warning signs. And also um, $455 million in research. So putting the money where the mouth is, we're trying to, to, it's the sixth leading cause of death and it's the only one in the top 10 that doesn't have any, um, any cure on the horizon. So that's what we're really fighting for. So with Terry, I've partnered with helping her as a business recruit new clients, engage with her current clients, and also connect with those clients who have maybe phased out of the process. So we're kind of doing some customizing and some brainstorming for her ways for her to get involved with the longest day and fundraise while promoting her business. So that's why she let me tag along a little bit and, and talk with you guys that that's my role is to kind of, um, there's not, it's not a sponsorship dollars, it's not anything, but it's if you say, hey, I'm, I'm passionate about this, I wanna get involved, um, I've got business cards here and I'd love the opportunity to visit with you, so. that too. Thanks. So with that, uh, we, I partner with the American Heart Association, the Alzheimer's Association, the Cancer Society, because when we talk about health, health encompasses all of these things. Um, something else in the handouts that I, we have uh, monthly cooking classes, uh, we have uh, cookbooks, that have been created by people that have gone through this protocol themselves. Uh, we, there are lots of opportunities. You get daily videos with Ideal Protein. And so we support you in any way that you need to be sort, supported through this journey. A lot of times people are, feel like, oh my gosh, you know, I can't do this because I, I don't have the support. My text, you can text me 24-7. I may not answer 24-7, but I am available to you 24-7. I don't have um, regular business hours. I am by appointment only um, because I, I see people that uh, work second and third shifts and some people need to come on the weekends. So there's really no excuse for not getting healthy, ideally. And, and if you have any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Go ahead. You talk about fruit and vegetables. What about fructose? Well, there's hidden sugars in a lot of things. And, and on the Ideal Protein Protocol Phase 1, we take the fruits off because there are natural sugars in it. You talk about fats, there are fats that are healthy and unhealthy. You talk about sugars, there are sugars that are natural sugars like in your fruits and unnatural sugars. Um, fruit toast, depending, you have to watch labels. And so that's, that's a big factor. They do. They do. I was trying to explain to my friend, I'm like, there's like 19 grams of sugar in an apple, but it's a different kind of sugar. And he's like, oh no, this sugar is different. I'm like, no, they're putting sugar cane in like everything we eat. So like watching the labels, but 
that's also, I'm trying to find ulterior motives because I also quit, like I, I do not drink at all anymore. It really is an unhealthy lifestyle now, but it, it, it's hard sometimes. I want to get in like the cupcake section, which goes against like the sugar <laughs> thing, but you know, so I should probably switch over to more fruits and, and just stick there. It's hard, it's hard to find a snack that like kind of appeases the appetite when you do cut all those things. You know? <laughs> well, actually vegetables are, are better. If you're going to choose something, choose vegetables. That was my other thing. So I see potatoes in there, but like uh, one thing that gives you, besides apples, give you almost every nutrient you need, besides vitamin D, which you can get in the sun and drink. Right. And then some sort of bacteria, which you can probably get from eating, eating, eating outside as well. But like sweet potatoes are really big and high in nutrition. Yes. Is that, just, is that a little bit healthier and different than just a regular potato? Yes, they are. They are. And that's the thing. When you look at labels, you say, you look right at the sugar and it says, oh, there's no sugar added. There's so many sugars that are hidden. So you have to read the contents of labels because there's so many different. And one of the handouts that I give to my clients so that they are educated about what a sugar is, is what a sugar is hidden in the certain labels. There's so many hidden things within the labels of, of canned and don't eat canned because that's processed. Processed food is the worst thing for you. Go ahead. That, that was another question. Some, some things they just naturally have, I, I noticed in the product that you have sugars and it's not like, but then there's that added sugar part that's, that, that, that's probably pure sugar. It is. It is, and I don't know how many of you are disappointed that you didn't have the nice um, Krispy Kreme donuts today. I will, I will not apologize because that is a healthy treat, and I don't know if you've, how many of you had them, but yeah, they, and that's the thing. That, that's the thing. Health food does not have to be disgusting. You know, my, I, we have over 80 products and I carry the most popular ones and people are like, you know what, I felt really guilty for eating this bar or these chips or this soup because it's really delicious. Um, that's Ideal Protein. The other co-founder of Ideal Protein was a French chef. And so he's not going to make something that's disgusting. He's going to make something that's really tasty. And so that's, that's kind of another myth that health food has to taste disgusting. It does not at all. It does not. So if it tastes good, spit it out. It's not good. <laughs> <laughs> Just depending on, not for ideal protein, right, right. What about stevia? Well, you've got to be careful of those. Um, some of our product has stevia in it, but it's minimal. And it, again, is you have to look at the labels and see what the content is of it. But there's, there's lots of hidden sugars. Like I said, I have a whole sheet of what is considered a sugar. As you look on the labels, you might look at it and you think, well, this is fine, but this is not fine at all. Go ahead, sir. I'm hearing a lot of scare stories about artificial sweeteners. Yes. And you mentioned stevia. Yes. Um, is there, do you have any general guidelines about artificial sweeteners? Uh, I, I have a, to stay away from the artificial sweeteners as much as possible, do it. Um, you know, now if it's already in a product, you, you kind of are at the mercy of that, but just kind of uh, watch for those artificial sweeteners. And there's, di there's different ones that are not even called stevia or different sweeteners that they are considered a sugar because it's a carb and all carbs metabolize into sugar. Yes. Go ahead. What's your take on high fructose uh, corn syrup? Yeah. Bad. Bad. Mm -hmm. See, it's, it's, almost, it's in almost everything. I know it like is. Every label I read, it's in there. I know it is. So here's the deal. Uh -huh. Good question. Here's the deal. Vegetables do not have high fructose <laughs> in it. Um, the proteins do not have high fructose in it. You don't have to have all of these different things. Eat things that are rooted, you know, from the ground. That's a good rule of thumb. Things, the vegetables that are rooted. Th that's just a good rule of thumb to follow. No processed food, because you're going to start, you're start going to start getting some of those things as challenges. Yes, sir. My, my doctor tells me to eat more green stuff. Yes. And if I'm going to eat meat, eat it from animals that are eating green stuff. Yes. That's true. And, and four to six ounces. Portion control is really huge as well. Um, when, when I put a client on this protocol, it's four to six ounces of a protein. But you get an actual protein at night. But most of the time, you are eating vegetables, lots and lots of green vegetables, and drinking lots and lots and lots of water. And you're yeah. not starving. 
that's a really big element that I think I was real. When you say four to six ounces, like shoot, I can eat that. Mm -hmm. But I mean, that was a that was a big thing for me. Of, of am I going to be wasting away, starving, irritated, mad? And and no, that would be maybe something to touch on too. And you're not because your body goes in keto into ketosis, and what that means is it starts feeding off of your own body fat. It's getting rid of your fat. That's what ketosis means. So. You know, it depends on how large of a person you are um, and how much you have to lose. That's, you're fine. Like, I have had 300 and 400 pound people come in and say, there is no way I can be on this protocol. I'm going to be starving next week. And they come in and I'll say, how'd you do? I couldn't even eat all that you had on your sheet. Why not? You were going to be starving. Well, your body is in ketosis. It's starting to eat the fat off out of your own body. Go ahead. I have a question about brain health. Is yes. supplementation important to brain health? And if so, what type of supplement should you be taking? You know, it, yes, it is. Um, I'm I'm not a licensed medical professional, so for me to for yeah, me I to start, you know, that type of question, so. um, I I can absolutely connect you with with research and with um, our, we've got a that's the other thing I didn't mention. Excuse me, we've got a 24/7 helpline. Um, that those questions are going to be, I, I just don't want to get wrong information out there, but yes, absolutely. So, you know, fish, uh, fish oils of yeah. healthy, healthy mind, healthy body cool. um, are all going to tie together. Now, for me to list six off of, hey, I, I encourage you to incorporate this into your, I can't do that, but I can sure connect you with some people getting you those right resources. Okay. Yeah. Yes, sir. I wanted to, I've been, I've been letting people know, because I noticed you had uh, tap water on here. You know, as far as far as gut killers, and I, I got to thinking one day, I always fill my cup full of ice. So now I buy silicone ice cube trays, so it doesn't sit in the plastic. And yep. I actually take my distilled water or purified water that I get from Joe's from the store, and I fill my ice cubes are actually purified water to my farm into my silicone trays. So that's one thing I do because then I figure I'm like, by the time the ice melts, I'm drinking half tap water. Exactly. Half purified water, but um, I'm trying to get away from two different two different things. It's like eating flatbread, like eating pita bread, different than eating actual bread itself. We're still gonna break down the same amount of sugars. Um, I I would have to look at the labels on them, and I I don't have an answer I for them. I, I just I I'm not on breads anymore. Yeah. I don't drink alcohol anymore. I'm off dairy, totally off dairy. I'm minimal on my fruits. It's more vegetables, and it's more a little piece of protein. And if I feel that I need a candy bar, I haven't eaten a candy bar since 2011. And I haven't eaten chips since 2011. Well, I eat my own ideal protein because I know what's in that. But you start sliding and saying, I can have one candy bar or one piece of bread or one this, and it, you, you lose control because it's, you talk yourself into, oh, I can do this t and tomorrow I'll start all over. And a lot of times you do not start all over. Dairy has a lot of, of stuff shot into it, like the different milks and whatnot. Um, there's sugar in dairy as well, so they just take you off of all dairy. Drink, do you like suggest? I know they still put sugar in sometimes, but like almond milk and things like Yeah, that. that's a better choice than vitamin D or 2% actually, but yeah. Yeah. You just have to be your own, you know, guide and, and read the labels. Be educated. That's, I guess that's my biggest takeaway from today is educate yourself because a lot of this stuff I had no idea about and I thought I was eating pretty healthy, but obviously I was not. Yes? One more question. Well, pack their lunches, and I just spoke to a class of three-year-olds actually two weeks ago, and I, uh, seriously, I took my five pounds of fat, and I took um, pictures of healthy and, and unhealthy situations, and um, they knew, they knew that the, the um, carrots and the broccoli and the cauliflower was healthy, and that the cakes and the cookies and all of the sugar was unhealthy. So if you start them out young, that's really important. I have a granddaughter who will be seven pretty soon, and she eats salmon all the time, and she eats vegetables all the time. But when she came into the world, grandma was gonna make sure she wasn't eating a bunch of junk, because I, I, it's horrible. 
Um, I have three other grandsons and they eat junk all the time and just, it's, it's not healthy, you know, and so start them young, to answer your question, start them young, start them on lots of vegetables. They won't know the difference. If you've not had the yucky stuff, then you won't know the difference that it's really delicious, but it's yucky for you. So yeah, good question. Any other questions? All right. Thank you both for being here today. I appreciate it. Thanks for having us. You bet. Did you have a... Oh, yeah. Let's do our drawing. Do you want to do the honor? Or? Aaron, do you want to do it? I don't, oh, I can, t I can touch. I haven't. Yes. <laughs> sneeze. Nobody. And it's Rob Sanders. All right. All right. Way to go, Rob. What's the book called? Um, what is the book I called? Ideal Protein Because It's and this is by the doctor that, that devised the Ideal Protein Protocol, Dr. Tran, over in France. All right, thank you both for being here. Terry and Aaron, we want to give you a Focus Sweet mug that you can put whatever healthy beverage in that you want. <laughs> right. And we appreciate thank your time you. thank for you. being here. So, thank you. Uh, hopefully we'll see everybody next week. Keep an eye on the newsletter, though, because the situation is changing daily. So. Uh, if we have to cancel coffee next week, uh, please check our website or check Facebook or read the newsletter on Monday. So anyway, thank you for being here. Have a great week.